Konnichiwa minasan and welcome back to my channel. Uh, if you follow me on social media, rather Twitter, you obviously already know all the feelings that I have about Logan Paul and the video that I made about Aokigahara. But I felt like maybe I could make a little bit more sense in video form, so that's why I made this. Um, I also have a lot that I'd like to say, and Twitter just kind of isn't enough. I have a lot of personal feelings about this, but I kind of first wanted to talk about how Japan is kind of reacting to it. I know a lot of people are quite concerned that this kind of now damages the image of foreigners or Americans or even YouTubers to Japanese people. Uh, that's not necessarily the case, I don't think. Like, maybe that'll be different um, in the next few weeks or so. But initially, that's not really so much how Japanese people would kind of react anyway. Basically, what he did doesn't worsen what the Japanese people think of foreigners. It doesn't worsen or better it, it just kind of stays the same. Essentially, we all know that there are outliers and psychos among all people, and he's just that. He's just an outlier. So don't be too concerned about how Japan feels. Uh, they're, they're, they don't think Americans are now the worst thing in the world after seeing this. It's not the case. Now here's my personal main issue with this whole situation. Um, I honestly think he was sick enough to not only make this video and put it out into the world, but also interact with a dead body that passed during such turmoil and distress because he doesn't really respect the Japanese as people. And I, like, almost as though he treats, he sees us as caricatures, as people maybe. Um, and I say this, I know I'm being hyperbolic, but why not do this in the U.S.? Why not just desecrate a dead body from an American cemetery for the shock value? Why did you have to do it in my country on a holy day of all days? Why that? Why was that important to you? And why were you able to do such a horrid thing as interacting with a body that passed from suicide? It doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever as a human being. Now, I'm pulling from my own biases and experiences, of course, but as a Japanese national citizen that grew up in the U.S. with a green card, there were a lot of times where I was treated as though I was really tiny and like I was a child. I was spoken to like a child Honestly, I, I still get spoken to like a child and a lot of it I understand does have to do with my size But it's also definitely because I'm foreign and I'm foreign in a way where I look very foreign and I understand but um, it's definitely alarming in the worst of ways and I must say that after watching some clips of Logan Paul's other vlogs in Japan the way he kind of behaves, I know he's just being crazy and he's being true to his brand and that's who he is and I get it, but there is definitely a sliver of, I think I see a sliver of what I used to experience when people used to talk down to me because I was foreign. I really, really see that in his vlogs and it bothers me because, like I said before, I really do think that maybe he doesn't see us on the same level of human being as him or something, and I think that that's perhaps why he was able to do such a horrid thing as interacting with a dead body that passed from committing suicide. And now I'm stepping into like semi-religious traditional territory, but we cremate our dead in Japan. So finding a dead body is absolutely riddled with all kinds of bad symbolism. And for those of you that are misunderstanding, Aokigahara is absolutely not a tourist attraction just because the internet glorified it and some people made content out of it. That doesn't mean that it is something that Japan uses to attract tourists. It's one of our sins and the internet is glorifying one of our darkest issues. That's not what we want people to see. And now moving on to his so-called apology, which was so self-serving that it ended up not being an apology whatsoever. In it, he specifically says that as a content creator, you get kind of caught up in the moment in what you're showing when it's something that's intense, whether it be 
a good or bad or spectacular or whatever. And I refuse to accept that as any kind of reasoning whatsoever, and I really want to call him out for it because everyone has their videos edited, especially him, who obviously has a whole team working behind his production. For literally no one to stop him is... It's not just just his responsibility now because, I, like I said, it's a team, it's a company, and I, I get that. But that was a really disgusting excuse to throw out there. And you should be ashamed as a YouTuber because that is what the beauty of YouTube is. Being able to know your audience or know the world and decide that this is something that I want to put out into the world. This content is good enough. This content is meaningful enough. This content is whatever enough. Shocking enough, I guess. For you, you decide to put that out there. That is the power that YouTube gives us. And you took that power away from yourself by using it as an excuse as to why this all went down. You have no sense of responsibility. But it doesn't matter whether he learns his lesson or whether he feels guilty or whether his apology is good enough or not. And this actually brings me to Meg Turney's tweet. It was possibly my most favorite tweet ever. She directed the responsibility onto YouTube, which makes absolute sense to me. There's no punishing him or disciplining him or teaching him or his fans a lesson. He's poison and it's true that he's too influential and his fans are not waking up. So it is now YouTube's responsibility to do something about this. YouTube needs to control the situation. And I think that's pretty much all I wanted to say and get off my chest. Uh, thank you so much for watching the video and listening to what I had to say. I really appreciate it. This is not the way I wanted to start 2018, but so be it. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you're having a lovely New Year's, and I guess I'll see you in my next video. Sonja matane!